How you doing everybody? YouTube world, Facebook world. Um, thank you for taking the time to um, listen to the message that the Lord has put in my heart to share. I know y'all miss my uh, beautiful smile, but uh, I'm just playing. Um, I want to share a message that I was working on earlier. And I've uh, been working on a few projects, a few um tasks and stuff and different things the Lord has put in my heart to share. There's just really so much that I, honestly I can't even keep up. But I'm trying to get it out as fast as I can. You know, especially with the times that we're living in with so much going on every day. You know, just it's just so much. And I want to start in Psalms one oh six. But before I get into it, I want to get where this um this sermon or lesson message how you want to put it, where it came from. If you don't know, I, I am self-employed. I have a cleaning service. I am independent contractor. Uh, you know, cleaning up businesses and stuff like that. And I make a, you know, it pays the bills. I'm content. And I guess the message of this video would be on contentness. But I was given the opportunity to pick up another contract. Now, this contract was probably... It's no less than a thousand dollar contract for like two days worth a week, but it's just a big, it's a big, it was a, well, it is a big complex to do. And I debated on if I wanted to take it and I prayed about it and everything. And I ended up not taking the contract. I had my bid ready to put in, you know, I put what I thought was fair, all the services I offered. I went and checked the building, you know seen everything they wanted, had a staff set up for somebody to help me with it because I wouldn't be able to do all of it. And my thing about picking up this contract was um, it wasn't so much about the money, but me being in an opportunity to help other people because by me picking up that contract, I would have, of course, been bringing in extra, you know, extra, extra money. Well, I can do some things with the ministry, you know, give more than what I'm um, able to right now as far, you know, with bills and stuff and paying rent and all that, all them things that come along with life. But I met with a friend of mine, brother in Christ. We had a good conversation about it. He, you know, said I should go ahead and do it. But at the end of the day, it was really what the Holy Spirit was telling me. And I ended up not taking the contract and then I even put my beard in. And the reason I did that was because I'm content with what I have. Now, I know that may sound crazy. Like, you know, who doesn't want a, a chance to expand the business, to grow the business? But the days that we're living in, I really don't have time. I would have been working all day. When I say all day, I mean from sunup to sundown, Saturday and Sunday. And those are some of my days where I really get into the Word and um, fellowship and get into a lot of lessons and stuff to put out to to share so excuse me I didn't put my beard in for the contract as I stated it was more so because I'm looking I'm looking forward to going home that's what my faith is in Jesus Christ that's how close I believe that we are to his return for me to turn down a between $1,000 and $1,500 contract. That's a week. Now, I mean, that's good money for anybody. Honest living, you know, I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just cleaning and whatnot. But I turned it down. Didn't even put the bid in. Because I'm content with what I have. And Jesus is coming. And that's what I truly, truly believe you. With everything the scriptures is, is, is speaking on. And everything that um that's going on in the world. That's how close... I believe that we truly are. That I don't really have time to do all that. I need to get these messages out. I need to, you know, preach the gospel. And that's what matters the most to me. If I had a job at Burger King, working at Burger King, and I was able to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, doing the same thing I'm doing now, I would be happy. I would be content with that. Because this world can't offer me anything. I guess that's why I've been on both sides of the fence as far as, you know, living a lavish lifestyle and now just, you know, Working, working the job and preaching the gospel. 
My riches are stored up in heaven. This world cannot offer me anything. So, I want to go to Psalms 106. And we're going to start at chapter 12. Then believed they his words. They sang his praise. They soon forgot his works. They waited not for his counsel. But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. Now this is talking about we know Moses delivering the um, Israelites from Exodus, or well, excuse me, not Exodus, but the Exodus out of Egypt. Verse 15, and he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their souls. Then believed they his words, they sang his praise. So they were giving them praise for his deliverance, all part in the sea. You know, that. <laughs> can you imagine that? Walking down, you got the sea on one side and the other sea on the other side. You just walking down the middle of it and dry land in the middle. That's amazing. Then it goes on to say, they soon forgot his works. They waited not for his counsel. So they went ahead of, they would pretty much they did what they wanted to do. They didn't wait for the Lord. But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. Now, you can take that. And you're going to apply it today because we're in the wilderness per se. You know, there's wild beasts. Scripture tells us that the Satan, he walks around like a um, roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So we're in the wilderness and we're waiting for God to deliver us. I mean, if you're a true born again believer, that's what you're waiting for. You're waiting for the return of Jesus Christ. You're waiting for the trumpet to sound. But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness. They got tired of waiting for him. For it to go into the promised land. And tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request. But sent leanness unto their souls. And he gave them their request. So they were seeking something. And he gave them what they wanted. But the question you had to ask. Was it good? What he gave them. See, God will give you what you want, but that doesn't mean it's good for you. He may give it to you just to teach you a lesson. And we'll see that. Because they weren't content with all the things that God had done for them. Let's go to um, Psalm 78. Psalm 78, verse 17. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. We know this is talking about the Israelites in the wilderness again. And they sinned yet more against him, provoking the Most High in the wilderness. So they kept on being disobedient. They were provoking the Lord. Provoking him to anger and wrath. And skip down to verse 22. Because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. See, they didn't believe that he was going to deliver them. Even though they had seen all the works and the miracles <laughs> that he had done for them. It says right there, even though they had seen all those things, we know they've seen these things. Because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Are you trusting in God in salvation? Yes, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit, but are you until the day of the redemption, but are you Truly trusting in God that he will deliver you. Or are you like the Israelites in the wilderness. Growing weary and growing tired and chasing out the idols. Doing what you want to do in this world. Let's go to Numbers. Numbers chapter 11. If I can find it. Numbers chapter 11 verses 4 through 6. Excuse me. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? So they're again, they're talking about in the wilderness, they're in the wilderness, and they're pretty much they're complaining. 
they were lusting. Verse 5. Remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. So they're going to remember about what they used to have. Oh, we used, I used to have these things. I used to have that. This I used to do all this, all this stuff. Even though they were in bondage. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. Now we know about the manna from heaven that God brought down. He was feeding them. He kept them fed. In the wilderness. For all that time. 40 years. And yet they still complain. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all. Beside this manna before our eyes. So it was right there. We don't want that. We don't want that. They weren't content with what the Lord had given them. And I'm pretty sure it was a nutritious food. Very nutritious. But they didn't want that. They wanted what things they used to have. They wanted their old life. They didn't want the promised land. They didn't want to wait for it. Let's go to the New Testament. We're going to go to 1 John. Because remember right here. In numbers, they went a lusting. First John chapter two verse sixteen. Well, let's let's go to fifteen, because this ties in also with this message. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. Let's skip back over to. Um, but now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. So the only thing that was before the eyes was the manna, but they didn't want that. And the lust of the eyes, they wanted more. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. They wanted the things that they had in the world. Not the things that they were going to receive, the promised land. They wanted to go back into bondage. They weren't content with what they had, what the Lord was giving them, the manna. Let's read it again. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, Father, but is of the world. Let's go down to 17 too. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now let's go to Romans. Chapter eight. Get some good, get some good manna, get some good bread in your soul today. Mm. What I said, Romans chapter, yeah, Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter 8 verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh. Let's start at 12. Therefore brethren. We are debtors not of the flesh. To live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh. Ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit. Do mortify the deeds of the body. Ye shall live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Hmm. But if ye through the but if ye excuse me, but if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. We are to live after the flesh, which is what they were doing. 
And let's go back to Psalms. Psalm 78. Go back to Psalm 78. We're going to go down to verse 25. We're going to see some things. Let's go back up to 22. So we can get it in context. Because they believed not in God and trusted not in salvation. Though he had commanded the cloud from above and opened the doors of heaven. And had rained down manna upon them to eat. And had given them of the corn of heaven. As we just read in Numbers. It's, it's saying the same thing. But it's going in more detail. So he gave them the manna from heaven. And the corn, the corn of heaven to eat. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to be to the full. He caused an east wind to blow in the heaven. And by his power, he brought in the south wind. He rained flesh also upon them as dust and feather fowls like as the sand of the sea. So we notice as the, the quail that were coming down that they were eating the birds, the flesh that they ate. Now check this out. Look what happened. And he let it fall in the midst of their camp, round about their habitations. So they did eat, and were well, and were well filled. For he gave them their own desire. Let's read that again. And he let it fall in the midst of their camp, round about their habitation. So he's talking about the quail, the birds that were eating, the, fret, the flesh that rained down upon them. So they did eat and were well, well filled. So they were satisfied. They, they were satisfied with the lust of the flesh of what they wanted. For he gave them their own desire. He gave them what they wanted. That's what you want. I'm going to give it to you. But, well, verse 30. They were not estranged from their lust. So they were tied in with their lust. But while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. That's some serious stuff. Following the lust of the flesh. So we see that the Lord provided for them. He had everything planned out for them. He delivered them from Egypt. He fed them. You know, they had water to drink. They had clothes. They had shoes. They had everything. The Lord provided everything for them. But yet because of the lust of their flesh, they wanted more. They weren't content. But did the Lord say, no, nah, I'm not going to you know, give you what you want. He said, hey, if this is what you want, I'm going to give you what you want. And he gave them what they wanted. And then what happened? The wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. God will give you what you want. They say everything that glitters is in gold. Everything that's, um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, everything that glitters is in gold. Everything that's good, looks good, isn't good for you. But God, he'll give you what you want. He'll give you the desires of your flesh. He'll hand you over. And then the wrath will fall upon you. And you'll be wondering, what in the world happened? As we see the scripture, the same thing happened. The same thing is happening today. So are you following the lust of the flesh? Are you content with what you have? I mean, me, I'm content. That's why I turned down the, um, didn't put my bed in. I wasn't even looking for the contract. It was, I was referred to that, that, um, the contract because of the work that I, I do. I was referred to it. But then at the end of the day, I decided not to go with it because I'm content with I'm content with the word. I'm content with Jesus Christ. I'm content with the job that I have. Now I'm I'm confident that I would have gotten a job because I would have put in a, a pretty competitive bid because I'm not I'm not trying to get rich. I'm not trying to, you know, bust somebody's head on prices and stuff. So ask yourself this question. What are your goals? 
What are you striving for in life? Are you striving to serve the Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you striving for things of this world? For the desires of the world? Lust of the flesh? Lust of the eyes? Pride of life? The scripture just told us that if those are the things you seek, that the love of the Father isn't in you. Let's go to James. We're going to get into it a little bit more. If I can um, find it. Uh -oh. They got to be right there. James 4.4. 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, adulterers, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So if you're friends with the world, the world loves you, then scriptures tell you, tell me too that, you know, that you're an enemy of God. Know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Let's go to Romans. Well, let's go to 1 John since we're already back here. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. See, this is why God doesn't want us to be a part of the world. This is why he wants us to be separate. Because he knows that the world is wicked. And he has something better for us. A promised land. But the question is, are you going to get caught up in the snares of the world? Are you going to get caught up in the lust of your flesh? Or are you going to be content? Now, that doesn't mean if he brings an opportunity to you, and you know it's from him not to take it. Because, I mean... That's between you and him. I can't tell you to take it or if, um, not to take it. Let's say you have a job opportunity. Um, no, that's something you have to take in prayer and you know have the sermon about it and line it up with the scriptures and say, okay, this is what the Lord wants me to do. And ultimately, you know, pray about it and see where he leads you with it. Now let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. But that doesn't mean take every opportunity just because the opportunity arises doesn't mean it's from God but as you see in the scriptures he will <laughs> he will give you desires of your flesh he will and then the wrath will come upon you we see that Romans chapter 12 verse 2 and be not conformed to this world again talking about the world Every time I'm speaking about the world, they're saying don't be a part of it. But yet so many Christians, so many unbelievers, which, you know, that's expected. But so many Christians, supposed to be Christians, they're caught up in the world. But over and over and over again in scriptures, it's speaking against being caught up in the world. Because you're caught up in the lust of your flesh. And be not confirmed, conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Again, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind will come, come excuse me, becomes renewed it's through Jesus Christ. Grace through faith in Jesus Christ. You become a new creature, new person. Old things have passed away. Now let's go to Hebrews and look at a few things. Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Now this is part of the reason why I didn't put my bid in for the contract. Because I'm content. 
I'm content with the Lord Jesus Christ if that's all I had at the end of the day. If I didn't have any job, any work, any car, any place to stay, if I was living out my truck or living under the bridge or living with the homeless, I would be content with that as long as I had the Lord Jesus Christ. But how many of us can truly be content with that if it came down to it? And he may, he may, he may pull somebody's card on that. He may put you in that situation. He may use that to humble you because you've gotten, you know, prideful. You've started following the lust of the flesh just like the Israelites were in the wilderness. And his wrath has come upon you. His judgment has come upon you. Let your conversation be without covetousness. We know what covetousness is. And be content with such things as you have. Be content with what you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So he's saying, hey, whatever you have, be content with it. Because either way, you're good as long as you have the Lord Jesus Christ. The scriptures also tell us, uh, he must increase and we must decrease. Or I must decrease. How can he increase? How can his light show through us if we're so consumed to worry about us? The lust of the flesh. Lust of the eyes. Pride of life. Don't be like the Israelites in the wilderness. Because he will give you desire, the, excuse me, the desires of your heart. But that doesn't mean it's going to be a good thing as we've seen. Let's go to Philippians. Let's go to 1 Timothy first. 1 Timothy chapter 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. <laughs> and having food and raiment, let us therewith, excuse me, and having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. I'm going to continue on, because I, I like what it says after that. It fits into all this. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And into many foolish and hurtful lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Hmm. There goes that contentment again. Let's go to Philippians. If I can find it. Is it Philippians? Yeah, Philippians. I'm sorry. Philippians chapter 4. Verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of want. For I have learned. In whatsoever state I am. I am therewith to be content. I know both. How to be abased. And I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me so regardless if he had food he was full if he had more than, than he deserved as you know the things that the Lord does give us, and we know we don't deserve it, you know, is humbling. But even when he was in need, he said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthen me. He knew he was going to be okay. He knew the Lord was going to take care of him. He was humble regardless of whatever the situation was. He was content with whatever he had, with whatever the Lord decided to give him. And I'm content with, um, you know, the contract that I have. Instead of pursuing another contract, that would have really pulled me away from um, pulled me away from the Lord. I feel like it would have took more time. And at the end of the day, I'm like, you know, I'm I'm good. My focus is on Jesus, as you know the name of my channel. Stay focused for Jesus. This world has nothing to offer me. 
What I'm looking forward to is what awaits me in heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ and whatever he decides to bless me with after that. But I know I have the promise of eternal life because I know in whom I have believed. Let's go to, I think we'll close with this one. Psalm 16. Eight through eleven. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. <laughs> For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At, that, at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. It's beautiful. That's beautiful. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart. He will provide. Be content. Don't get caught up in the snares of the world. Don't get caught up in this lust that passes away in the blink of an eye. Just like life passes away in the blink of an eye. We're here today, gone tomorrow. That's why today is the day of salvation. Repent ye and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. His death on the cross. His shed precious blood that washes away and forgives all your sins. His burial. Put him in a tomb. Lay there for three days. His resurrection. They walked around. People seen him. They talked to him. They ate with him. And that we know where he is now. He ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand. Of the Father. Watching. Pleading on, on our behalf. It's going to come a time when he's going to blow the trumpet. And we will be with him forevermore. And we will rejoice in joy beyond what we can describe now. So, I think that's about it. I just want to share that. I pray this message blesses you, brings edification, and most importantly, I pray it um, helps you stay focused for Jesus and stay focused on Him. God bless you in Jesus Christ's name. Have a blessed day.